Europe is in the grip of a fierce heat wave, with many countries across the continent experiencing record temperatures. Wildfires are burning in different parts of the continent, including in France, Spain, Italy, Portugal, Croatia and Greece. They're also burning in Morocco, in North Africa. In France, the authorities are warning of a heat apocalypse. We know many towns and cities have recorded their highest ever temperatures. The city of Nantes recorded 42 degrees Celsius, beating a previous high of 40.3 degrees set more than 70 years ago. And the town of Saint-Briac on the north coast reached 39.5 degrees Celsius. The previous record was 38.1, dating back to 1949. Well, this was the scene overnight in the Gironde region on the French Atlantic coast. You can see the scale of the fires that are burning through some of the forest there. Then this is drone footage from earlier, again, showing us the scale of what's happening. And this is the satellite image that shows the region. You can see smoke is clearly visible from space. We know thousands of firefighters are now battling these fires and more than 14,000 hectares of forest have already been damaged. As well as that, over 20,000 people have been evacuated and that figure is expected to rise. Let's hear from one of them. It was very smoky this morning. It's very bad for the lungs. I knew there were problems coming, so I prepared a grab bag. Even the medications for my dogs were ready to go. Well, this is the National Director of Fire and Rescue Services in France. We need a lot of water to extinguish. Pines that, for example, in, in the area of Bordeaux are more than 30 meters high. So uh, it's very difficult even just for one tree and you cannot put one fire truck for one tree. It's impossible. Well, next let's hear from our Europe correspondent, Jessica Parker, who's in southwest France. There has been obviously temperatures soaring today, peaking over 40 degrees here while these wildfires continue. That, by the way, is a local evacuation centre. And we were here a couple of days ago when the air was clear. But today you can smell, you can taste the smoke as those wildfires continue to rage. The winds around here have been described as unstable and the fire spreading. We've just heard in the last hour that a further 5,000 people are set to be evacuated from the local area. Some of them will be coming straight here. And what the authorities are saying, it's because of the smoke, not because those villages or towns are at threat of the fire itself, but it's the smoke and the health risks around that. Further inland, another blaze in the area of Landeras. There are further evacuations there as well. That's Jessica in southwest France. Next, let's turn to neighbouring Spain, because wildfires there have been burning in the hills of Mijas, near the city of Malaga, which is in the southwest. Firefighters have managed to get those under control. But you can see the extent of the damage from this satellite image. The area is close to beach resorts on the Costa del Sol. And our correspondent, Bethany Bell, is there. The fire swept down this hillside and you can see the destruction that's been left behind. There's still a strong smell of burnt wood in the air and ash is flying around. The authorities have managed to control the fires that were burning in this region near Mijas, just outside of Malaga. And the people who were evacuated from their homes have now been able to return. Let's switch from the southwest of Spain to the northwest, where officials in the Zamora province say 20 wildfires are burning out of control and threatening houses and threatening people's livelihoods. Now, this is footage posted on social media from inside a train in the Zamora province. You can see wildfires burning on both sides of the train. But here's a resident describing the situation there. People are really angry, but they are also very, very scared, scared for their lives. And not only because of the fire that is going now, but because everything is destroyed. Um, animals and um, the harvest. Uh, so... Uh, the fire is really bad right now, but the winter is going to be really, really hard. A lot of people won't have anything to eat. And it's just very, very, very sad to see that. And on the situation in Spain, let's hear once more from our correspondent, Bethany Bell. In the northwestern area of Zamora, two people are known to have died. One was a fireman who died last night. And Spain's Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, said on Twitter that he extended his condolences to the family and he also thanked everybody who was fighting the fires in these difficult conditions. The second death was a shepherd who died 
and apparently because he had ignored warnings to go out uh, into the burnt areas and his body has now been found. We've heard from Spain, we've heard from France. Next, we turn to Portugal, where temperatures have dropped over the weekend, but more than a 1,000 firefighters are still battling nine fires in the central and northern regions. Let's speak to Alison Roberts, who's live with us from Lisbon. Alison, first of all, bring us right up to date on those fires and their scale, please. Yes, as you say, temperatures have dropped, but uh, most of Portugal is still under extreme and very high fire risk. Um, six fires currently are of most concern. And we're just getting reports, I'm sorry to say, of two people who have died while trying to flee the, the, the flames. Uh, that was in Villa Real district in the north of Portugal. According to local reports, it was an elderly couple who were scared because of the flames and, and started to try to flee, and they went off the roads. So um, that, that's all the details we have not confirmed as yet, but that's what we're hearing from local reports speaking to local police there and other fires are burning in other places some of them quite close to major towns guarda which is one of the big towns in the interior in the north there uh, that's um residential areas and industrial areas are being um surrounded by by flames according to local reports and alison how do these fires compare with what portugal might experience in a normal or average summer well, so far this year, 43,000 hectares have burned. And of that, uh, something like 28,000 has been just in the last week and a half. So already this year, uh, we've seen more burn than any year since 2017. You may remember 2017 was the year that we had those terrible fires in June when 66 people died. And of course, that's a memory that people still carry with them, a trauma. And people are constantly referring back to that situation and, and seeing whether... Uh, communication has improved, coordination has improved. It certainly has seen to, and there seems to be more successful prevention uh, than in the past, but we'll have to see whether firefighters can continue to keep most of these blazes under control. You were mentioning there's been some respite in the temperatures over the weekend, but what's the forecast going into this week? Will the respite continue as those fires are being battled? Yes, um, they're, they're going to stay below 40 degrees, it seems, but they may go up a little towards Thursday and Friday. And in terms of the fire risk, uh, more of the country will be at extreme fire risk at that time in the week. So things are going to worsen a little as the week wears on, I'm afraid. Alison, thank you very much indeed. We switch from Portugal to North Africa because Morocco has also been seeing temperatures exceeding 40 degrees Celsius. This comes as the country is facing the worst drought recorded in the last 30 years. Many of the wildfires have largely been contained, but there are still some that are not under control. Here's Usama Amari, a journalist at Morocco World News. More than 6,000 hectares of forest, of forest land have been damaged by the fires. Uh, but while there are still fires being fought in the northern region of Morocco, they do say that the, uh, a few of them have been contained. The largest one, which has damaged over 5,000 hectares, is still being fought, although it is contained to a large degree, up to 70%, uh, according to the official numbers. Uh, but these fires have been proven very difficult to combat. The terrain where they are happening is very uh, difficult to traverse. And for uh, firefighting planes, there isn't any nearby large enough water sources to use uh, to bring water to the fires to fight them. Now, scientists are warning that these heat waves are going to become more regular as climate change continues. Let's hear from our climate correspondent, Jonah Fisher. This isn't a one-off, a freak weather event. It's something that we're going to have to get used to. For as long as our emissions continue to warm the planet, and at the moment temperatures are rising by a quarter of a degree every 10 years, heat waves like this one are going to become more frequent and more intense. Now, some leaders have been explicitly connecting this heat wave with climate change. For example, here's Prime Minister Sanchez in Spain. More than 70,000 hectares have been destroyed as a result of fires so far this year in our country. That's almost double the average of the last decade. All these fires are caused by heat waves due to the climatic emergency that the planet is experiencing right now. That's in Spain. The UK is also experiencing a heat wave and Prince Charles has reminded the public that these record-breaking temperatures show that those commitments around net zero 
have never been more vitally important. But experts are worried that perhaps not enough is being done. We have three years from now, a little bit less now, uh, but three years to take decisions to go into the direction of a livable world. So we can still act to make it livable for human beings on this planet. It's just on us to decide.